Hi. Now, in this tutorial, what I want to show you is why the transformation y equals af of x stretches the graph y equals f of x by a scale factor of a parallel to the y-axis. Now, in order to do this, what I've done is I've just taken any general graph of the form y equals f of x and started to look at a table of x values going from minus 4 to 4 for this graph here. So we need to fill in some of the y values for y equals f of x. Well, you can see from the graph that when x is 4, the corresponding y value for f of 4 is 3. So we can write this in here that f of 4, that's when x is 4, gives a y value of 3. And if we were to look at when x is 3, you'll see that f of 3 gives a y value of 1. So we can say f of 3 equals 1. And if we were to fill in all the other values in the table, you'd get something like this. And I'll leave it to you to check to see if they are correct. OK, well, now that we've got those values, let's look at a transformation, something like this, of the form y equals a of a f of x. Well, I've got a table here where we're going to look at y equals a half f of x. The a value is going to be a half. So if we're looking at those values, let's start, say, with x equals 4. We need to know what the corresponding y value is going to be when we do half f of 4. So if we put this down here, half f of 4, what are we going to have? Well, we know that f of 4 is 3. And if we halve that, it's going to be 1 and a half, 3 over 2. And if I was to plot that coordinate for 3 over 2, let's just see where it would be. 4 here, 3 over 2 is 1 and a half, so you've got a point there. Notice how this point here has now been reduced by half. Let's take another one. Let's have a look at this point here when x is 2. This is a very important point because it lies on the x-axis. So what we're going to need to do is work out what half f of 2 is going to be. Well, what is the y value for f of 2? Well, it's clearly 0. And if we halve 0, it still remains 0. So what actually happens to this point on the x-axis is that it stays the same point. It stays invariant. Okay, So we've got a point there. It never moves. And that's going to happen for any point on the x-axis, like this one here and this one here. Let's have a look at another one, a point on the y-axis. This point when x is 0. When x is 0, we have half f of 0. And what's that going to be? Well, we can see that at f of 0, f of 0 is minus 1. We've got it in the table here. So if we halve that, we're going to have minus a half. So this point is going to go there. So notice how when you're below the x-axis, the points are halved. Now, if we were to fill in all the other values for x in this table, then we'd have the values like this. You'll notice I haven't filled in the one for x is minus 4. If we were to do that, then we'd have half of f of minus 4. What's that going to be? Well, f of minus 4 was minus 4. And if we halve that, it's going to be equal to minus 2. So I could put that point in as well. There it is there. Well, if we were to join up these points, we end up with the new graph, OK? Y equals half f of x. And here we have it. All right? So that is y equals half f of x. And hopefully what you notice is that basically all the y values have been halved. And when they stay on the x-axis, they don't move, they're invariant. And when they're below the x-axis, 
again they're halved. So we get this shape of graph for this particular graph y equals f of x and that would be true for any graph. Okay so that was with a being a half it meant that we had a stretch scale factor a half parallel to the y-axis but what about another one? Well let's have a look at this one where we're looking at y equals 2f of x. So again we need to fill in a few values. Let's start with say x equals 3. Well if we're doing x equals 3 we need to work out what 2 lots of f of 3 are going to be. Well f of 3 was 1 and if we times it now by 2 we double it so instead of being 1 it's going to be 2 so it's going to be there. So 2f of 3 is going to be 2. Let's take another point 2. This is an interesting point again because it's on the x-axis. So we need to do twice f of 2 twice f of 2. Well we know that f of 2 is 0 and if we double it it's still going to be 0 so it remains at the same point. It remains invariant. So we've got that one. And if we look at a point again on the y-axis in this case f of 0 f of 0 you can see was minus 1 but if we were to do 2 f of 0 then we obviously double the minus 1 giving us minus 2. And if we put that point in, we've got it there. So you can see it's pulling out the red graph below the x-axis, it's pulling it down by a factor of 2. When it, any points on the x-axis, they stay invariant. And when any points are above the x-axis, they are doubled. All right. Well, if we fill in the remaining values in this table, we would get this series of values which you can check out and then if we plot the corresponding coordinates we get something like this and if we draw the curve in you can see that what we've got is that the red graph has been pulled out now by a factor of 2 and we get the new graph y equals 2f of x which a is 2 and so what we have is that y equals 2f of x stretches y equals f of x by a scale factor of 2 parallel to the y-axis. So I hope that gives you some idea then of why this transformation gives us stretches of scale factor a parallel to the y-axis. Okay, well that brings us to the end of this particular tutorial.